let's clean then redress the room for free with the Haley's help move items not money method if you are constantly going out and buying new items to dress your home then stop today we are going to clean a room and redress it completely free in a world of aesthetics and everything being picture perfect it does put a huge pressure on us i am totally guilty of scrolling through my feed and thinking yep yeah, i need that vase I need that occasional chair. I need a lot of things when I scroll through my feed, but the truth is we actually don't. The move items, not money method is something I've advised on here before, and I advise it to the homeowners who I go to help when it comes to keeping their homes clean and organized. And it really is super simple to do. But before we get into that, let's get cleaning our chosen room. I want you to choose whatever room you like in your house so you don't overwhelm yourself. Just one room is our starting point here and we are going to clean it starting from the top, working our way down to the bottom. So this is gonna include the ceilings, the blinds, windows, walls, doors, sofa, table, TV, chairs, skirting boards, and floors. This is gonna be different from room to room, so whatever room you're working with, but we're gonna do it in that order. So you start from the top, you finish at the bottom. Let's begin the clean. The first part in our rooms that we are going to be cleaning is the ceiling. So when it comes to cleaning the ceiling, all you need is either a vacuum with your dust attachment, I'm gonna be using my friend Henry Quick today because he loves it. He loves the job of sucking up the cobwebs and the dust. And that is exactly what we're gonna be doing. This is the dust attachment. Attach that to your vacuum. If you don't have a vacuum or you're looking to save on electric at the moment, that is absolutely fine, but you're gonna need some sort of dusting apparatus. So potentially one of the long poles with the dust attachment on the end that you can go around and dust the ceilings with. Ceilings can get very, very dusty, particularly at this time of year. We're just kind of edging out of winter and heading into spring. So if you are looking to spring clean your home, you're on the right place. Let's whiz around the room and get rid of any dust or cobwebs on our ceilings. <laughs> taken our light fixture off I'm going to clean this over the easiest way to do this is just in your sink with some dish soap this is antibacterial dish soap and you don't need tons and tons of it I have my trusted cloth box here it makes me so happy how organized this is and I'm just going to use this cloth I like to use white cloths when cleaning because I feel like it shows the dirt that's coming off and also they bleach up really really nicely so this is hella dusty this um this lampshade and the easiest way to clean it is literally just by doing this and just making sure that it's dried off properly so that it doesn't rust or anything and then it can go back up and we're going to do the same thing with the actual light itself so we're going to go in there and we're going to with this cloth we're going to damp dust but we want to make sure because we're obviously touching electricals that it is switched off for one and that also we've wrung the cloth out so it's nigh on dry you don't want it to be soaking wet but look look at the dirt that's already come off and this will then go in a bleach bath and it will be pristine white again and placed back with its brothers and sisters in here. And then guys, once you finish this, while your lampshade is drying, this is also gonna be drying. Don't start attaching things just yet, just to make sure that any kind of moisture that is there is completely gone before you start putting your light fixture back on to the light. Okay, next up, we're moving on to walls. I love a bit of wall washing. If you've been here for a while, you know that to be true. Again, we're just gonna be using dish soap. You don't need to use anything wildly abrasive on your walls. And so not to ruin the paintwork, the only other thing you could use is sugar soap. Sugar soap works really well on walls as well, but I'm gonna be using the solution that I've already mixed up. So we're not wasting product and we are not wasting water. We're in a cost of living crisis, so let's 
you know, think ahead. And again, we're just gonna use the same cloth that I've used on the light. It's nigh on dry again. You don't want it sopping wet when you begin wiping your walls down. You just want it slightly damp and we're gonna go over all of our walls, removing any kind of marks or scuffs or any dirt or grime that might have built up over the winter months. going to be our doors so we're going to be tackling these again with some dish soap and a cloth and then for the handle because it's a high touch area we want to use a product like a disinfectant so this might be Sephora this might be Milton baby sterilizing fluid it might be bleach you pick your weapon and let's get cleaning when you clean your doors doing a top to bottom clean you want to make sure that the top bit here where it kind of lips over that you get that this is a magnet for dust and dirt so you're going to find that it gets quite grubby so before you begin cleaning just give it a swipe over from one side to the other just to remove any dirt that might be lingering there door it's time to do the handles i am going to be using my sephora it's here in this bottle and i've gone ahead and got a separate cloth that is just going to get sephora sprayed onto it and then i'm just going to wipe over the handle the next phase we are going to be pressing onto is our windows our blinds if you have them and any pictures that are in your room so I've got a few pictures on the walls I am going to be using this this is my window cleaning so I will add all of the products that I've used in today's clean in the description box as always this is an absolute triumph when it comes to cleaning your windows if you want a streak free shine this is wonderful I've got myself this is my second bottle now I had one bottle that I ordered last year, it lasted me for ages because the mix ratio is very, very good on this large bottle. And I think I pay about seven pounds a time, but it will last you for ages and ages and ages. So it actually does work out quite cost effective. And it is the best thing when it comes to tackling any kind of dirt build up particularly if you want to get rid of the dirt and then make sure that the area is then oh so shiny afterwards. So let's head into the living room and the choice of your room that you are cleaning today and clean the windows and the blinds. <laughs> Lines, we are going to be using the Haley's Help glove to clean method. Did you see what I did there? Glove to clean. And what it basically is, is you can get these really cheap gloves. If you've got an old winter pair and you're having a clear out, don't throw them, keep a hold of them. And what happens is with the gloves, it just enables you a, a better clean because you're not having the blinds wobble all over the place. But it also allows you to do the top and bottom by using this pinching method. So what I'll be doing is dipping my fingers into the solution we're working with, pulling them across, and we'll go from the top right to the bottom. Each slat will be cleaned beautifully and the blinds will be pristine clean. When it comes 
to cleaning your windows as well, guys, make sure that you have two cloths. Ideally, one for putting your window cleaner onto the windows and then another one for buffing it off. The best cloth for this are ones that are specifically designed for windows. And you can also go around your UPVC as well with this particular product that I'm using. It makes it really, really clean and shiny. And then you take your drying cloth and go over it as quick as possible. The key here is you never want the water to dry onto the glass. The minute it starts drying, you're gonna end up with those streaks that we wanna avoid. That said, with this particular product, I have left it before and it's dried streak free, which is why I really like it. I'm just going to be using the Pledge Everyday Clean Multi Surface Cleaner. Spray it onto your cloth of choice and just give it a wipe over. When it comes to your radiators, guys, you've got a couple of options. Today, I'm just going to be using the dust attachment on the Henry Quick to go over it and remove any dust. But if you've got dust that is really stuck inside the radiator, get a hairdryer and blast the hairdryer through the radiator. There are loads of different hacks where you can pour water through your radiator. The reason I advise against this is you can get a rust build up. So it's not like completely against the rules to do that, but generally speaking, if it doesn't dry out and a lot of us aren't having the heating on as often at the moment, it can cause a rust build up and then going to be looking at a costly repair. So err on the side of caution with that. I prefer to just use either a vacuum cleaner, a radiator cleaner, like you get these tools that you can push through, or you can use the hairdryer method. <laughs> radiators we're just going to go ahead and wipe them down for this you can just use some dish soap antibacterial and your cloth and then you can also go ahead and once you're doing it dry off with your glass cleaning cloth if you find sections like here where you have scuff marks on your radiators I'm rubbing this really, really hard and it's not coming off. What you can do is go in with the pink stuff. So you don't need an awful lot of this product, just a tiny amount on your index finger. Wrap the cloth around your index finger and put a small amount on like that. And once I start rubbing this in, you'll see that it will lift it off. sofa so before you do anything with your sofa 
Mine does need a spot clean. There are a few stains that I have spied on the sofa. We'll get to that part in a second. But before you do anything, you want to vacuum over your sofa. So get rid of any kind of dirt or dust that might be lingering on your sofa and make sure that you lift the cushions as well to get the base of the sofa too. We are also going to be pulling the sofa out because we do not clean around things. You wanna make sure that you're cleaning under them as well. This is a deep clean. So we wanna make sure that there is not a morsel of dust or dirt left within the one room that we are tackling today. <laughs> Okay guys, as you can see, there is a little stain here. I don't know what it is. It's, it will be from one of the children. And basically, if you've got any stains on your sofa and you don't know what it is, your best form of action is using a biological detergent. So this is just biological liquid detergent that you would use on your clothes mixed up with a small amount of cool water. Now, the reason we wanna use biological detergent to treat these types of stains is, we don't know what stain this is, and if it's a protein stain, so let's say it was milk, for example, that's gonna be the best thing that's gonna remove that. So always go in with a biological detergent first. Never use hot, because what you can essentially do is cook the stain in further. You wanna lift that stain, and then all you're gonna do is just gently kind of dust away at it with your index finger wrapped around the cloth, dipped into your biological detergent. And more often than not, that will shift any stain that you have. Remember that your sofa is kind of like a mattress when it comes to tackling it. You never want to oversaturate it. So don't go wild with the liquid that you're using and then get the dry part of the cloth and just rub it over. And then you can go and grab yourself some cool water on another cloth that will then get rid of the detergent that's on the sofa. As always, with any of the tips that I give you, especially with it's, when it's with upholstery, make sure that you work with an inconspicuous area first. So once you test a certain area on your sofa, then that will show you whether you'll be able to use this method or not. Generally though, most sofas will be fine with just a small amount of biological detergent. And as you can see, the stain is no more. It has gone. to our skirting boards for your skirting boards you can just use a damp cloth and just run over the tops of them like this with your damp cloth use some antibacterial dish soap as well really small amount and if you have any scuffs like this again we're going to go in with our pink stuff and just take a small amount onto your cloth rub it into the area you want to remove and it comes off on to cleaning our floors today i am going to use the cinderella method it's my favorite method when it comes to deep cleaning your floors it simply means you do it on your hands and knees if you can't do it on your hands and knees just use a mop and bucket it's absolutely fine i just choose to do it this way it's my preferred method of cleaning the floors i am going to be using the sif floor cleaner this one smells an absolute dream you're going to put a small amount into your hot water 
And then because my floors are laminated floors, you never want them soaking, soaking wet. So make sure that you really, really wring your cloth out. Same with if you're using a mop and a bucket, make sure you just really wring it out so you're not putting soaking wet water onto the floors. And then I'm literally just going to wipe them all down. The last thing we're going to do guys before we move on to our next process is we are going to disinfect certain parts of our room. So I'm going to be using the Method Anti-Back All-Purpose Cleaner with Rhubarb. This smells an absolute dream and this is going to be used on my light switches and all the switches around the room and my table. So I'm going to do just the top of the table. And make sure when you're using your antibacterial solution that you make sure you leave it for the right amount of contact time. When you do your switches, make sure you're spraying it onto a cloth. Don't spray it directly on like I have just done on the table. It's fine on the table, don't do it on your switches or your light fixtures. let's move on to the fun part i want us to gather some of our accessories from around our home this will be vases wax burners plants cushions these are going to be our dress items don't worry if you think it won't match as you'll be surprised when we get to placing them remember you've already bought these we are simply moving them to give them a new lease of life now once you've gathered the things that you think you want to as a little bit of je ne sais quoi to, we're gonna wipe them down and if nothing else, you have ticked off cleaning the trinkets around your house for the week. We are then gonna start placing these items in different areas in the room that we have just cleaned. So this might be that the vase that is gathering dust in your bathroom looks way much nicer in your lounge. Play around with it, have a bit of fun and you can take photos to see how it feels. Once you've completed it, firstly, you're going to feel a huge sense of achievement, but you also are not going to be tempted to go out and spend even more money on things that we already have in our home and we simply don't need. This is the moving items, not money method. When we rearrange our furniture or even just dress items to a new area in our homes, it actually increases our dopamine levels and it reduces our cortisol. Dopamine is responsible for releasing stress and cortisol increases anxiety and stress. The items you have left over, you're then gonna tackle your next room. So once we've done this, move on to your next room and do the exact same process. The beauty of the move items, not money method, is you can do this every six months or a year and it is an ongoing process that will cost you absolutely nothing. today's vlog guys i hope you found it helpful and i hope you enjoyed this vlog if you did as always don't forget to click the like button this lets us know that this is the type of content you want to see on the channel if you are new here make sure you hit the subscribe button you will be surely welcome on this channel and you can also click the bell notifications this will notify you next time we upload a brand new shiny vlog as always, team, until next time, keep it clean. Bye, guys. <laughs>